Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Health in the Metaverse. Dr. Avatar is waiting. And if you think that an avatar is some kind of cartoon-based character in a game that your son plays, think again. This is actually a picture of my avatar that was made in Dubai last year by Everdome, a 360 degree, 250 camera operation that allows you to make a hyper-realistic uh, avatar of yourself for use in the metaverse. So today I'm going to take you on a quick journey through health in the metaverse and talk to you about what are both the possibilities and what's already happening with health in the metaverse. But let's just start with what is the metaverse? So the metaverse is actually the coming together of a number of different technologies that people have been working on for many years, including gaming, blockchain, artificial intelligence, augmented reality and virtual reality. There's no singly defined concept of the metaverse as yet, but it's some sort of immersive digital ecosystem that uses extended reality and blockchain to create spaces for user interaction and exchange of value. And it's estimated to become a $30 trillion industry by 2030. And many people are building the metaverses. You've probably heard of Mark Zuckerberg and his announcement that Facebook were going to be building um, a metaverse and rebranding as meta. And yes, they are, but they are not the only ones. So there's more than 160 companies building metaverses, and that includes the big techs like Apple, Microsoft, and Meta. It includes the gaming industry, which has 3 billion players globally, and they're used to immersive environments. It includes governments like the city of Seoul, Dubai, and Neom in Saudi Arabia, and it includes the Web3 community. So how is this going to affect health and wellness? Let's look at some of the opportunities. The first one is collaborative working. So if you think about scientific discovery, historically, this has been done by flying people all around the world to a central place like World Health Organization, Geneva. They meet for a few days, they have some discussions and they fly back. What Metaverse will allow is continuous collaboration with 3D avatars, digital whiteboards, digital workstations. You can make 3D models of virtually anything via digital twin technology, which means that scientists will be able to test machines, systems and procedures to detect possible failures and improvements. And it allows simultaneous education, training, planning and collaborative medical procedures. In the area of education, a lot of work has already been going on in healthcare with augmented and virtual reality. And this is going to allow new ways of teaching medical students and medical practitioners about clinical care. So let's imagine, for example, instead of students going into an anatomy lab and cutting up frogs, they will be able to go inside the human body with a 360 degree view traveling through the body and looking at the heart and its relationship to other parts of the body. There'll be possibility of simulated surgical encounters so that surgeons and medical students both can actually practice on digital twins and new surgery until they get it right. This kind of immersive learning will be more fun for students and through data analytics, their actual learning skills are going to be able to be analysed and assessed and precision learning targeted. And it'll allow education of patients as well on treatment plans and their conditions. And through a phenomenon of play to earn, people are now looking at earn to learn. So rewarding people for learning the kinds of skills that you want them to learn. In clinical care, you will be able to see your doctor or nurse avatar for realistic consultations, personal care, treatment and diagnosis. This is obviously not emergency care, but for general care, triaging by avatars is going to be commonplace. 
In surgery, real-time guidance can be provided in the surgeon's field of view with a precise data overlay of the patient's body, allowing real precision medicine that's never been possible before. Gamification is going to be a big part of health in the metaverse in the future. We're going to have avatar instructors doing virtual workouts. Move to Earn is already becoming popular where people are incentivized to be active. So Sweatcoin, for example, incentivizes activity. And GenoPet is an exercise to earn game that allows players to earn for being active using smartphones and wearables to track the data and patients are rewarded for exercising and movement. Data is going to be a huge part of the metaverse and people are going to be able to monetize their data. The healthcare sector creates more than 30% of all the data created in the world today. We're going to see play to earn, learn to earn, move to earn, Health data marketplaces will connect and monetize data and make it available for scientific discovery. For now, much of the health data lays dormant and isn't used for scientific discovery, and the people who own the data don't have the opportunity to benefit from the data. And self-sovereign identity will actually allow individuals to monetize their data. We all know that the determinants of health are social. And many people who come to the health system have other problems. They have financial problems, they have social isolation problems, they may have chronic diseases, they may have substance abuse problems. And this is going to allow them to have a personal immersive experience meeting 3D support avatars um, without having to leave their homes, which is important for the old and the infirmed and the socially isolated, but they'll be able to access community groups in the metaverse, social services such as housing and finance, and activities like virtual travel and shopping that they don't need to leave the house for, and they'll be able to access information and support workers will be able to be provided education in the metaverse for the social determinants of health. We are moving to an era where community is going to be the big driver of all businesses. Digital communities can form networks through token economies and the metaverse will enable new immersive community economies using social tokens, allowing for bi-directional beneficial relationships between providers and consumers and consumers can become the agents of innovation in a distributed model of collaboration and social tokens will reward community members for their communication for their contribution and we're already seeing the development of these social token metaverse ecosystems in the care economy and we're going to see more of that so in fact, communities can build their own economy, form networks, be rewarded and paid with tokens, have access to token capital, investment and a stake in the system. And the user can become a stakeholder and an agent of innovation in a distributed model of collaboration. And gamification can increase people's involvement, engagement, motivation and incentives. And it can encourage people to make better choices and meet community obligations. And if you think about big areas of burden of disease in the healthcare system, like chronic disease, obesity, mental health, this can be a powerful tool for connecting those people and incentivizing and rewarding them. But even though this all sounds very powerful, and indeed it is, there, there are social and ethical implications. So digital ethics are not different from conventional ethics, but the potential for automation at scale is the challenge. And here are some of the things that I see we're going to need to really consider purposefully in advance on the metaverse. Should it be open in that everyone can participate, everyone can be rewarded or closed like the one the big techs are building? If you create something in the metaverse, who will own it? Should avatars have human rights? Should avatars be bound by the rules of the real world? 
What about data security, privacy and rights? Because there will be so many more data points in the metaverse that people uh, are going to be able to access and have knowledge about you almost more than you know about yourself. How do we protect consumers? What about physical and mental health impacts of long periods in immersive ex experiences, but also when those immersive experiences can be psychologically challenging? What about children in the metaverse? How do we protect them? How do we prevent them coming to harm? How do we make sure that the metaverse is equitable, inclusive and decentralised? And how do we build metaverses where we maximise benefit and minimise harms? All of this wonderful technology gives us new choices, but only ethics can tell us which choices are good. Healthcare in the metaverse is already being built, is already growing. There are partnerships all around the world between healthcare organisations and gaming companies and AR and VR companies, and it's being used uh, quite extensively in the treatment of mental health and anxiety. And we are going to see more and more and more healthcare in the metaverse. And indeed, you probably will meet your doctor avatar. Thank you very much.